<clears throat> All right. So, as you know, um, my wife and I have been attending each of the Pittsburgh Symphony concert uh, in the subscription series. And uh, today is Sunday, December 3rd. Um, and I heard Brahms Requiem. I was there on my own. Um, my wife, sadly, is at a f funeral out of town. So um, so I went on my own. And we'll just start off by addressing the elephant in the room, which, again, if you've heard my other videos, uh, you know that I am particular about the length of concerts. I don't think they should be very long. And I think that they are usually padded, and I don't understand why. Uh, the Brahms Requiem is an hour and something, 20, hour and 10. And it's a magnificent, huge piece. And it, it should have been the only piece on the program. It didn't need to be the second half of a concert with a bunch of stuff in a first half. It should have just been Brahms Requiem. Show up, listen to it, have your mind beautifully blown away, and then and then go home. By adding in a first half, it makes that um, joy, that spiritual experience, it turns it into drudgery. Now, having said that, today I happened to have the Mozart D minor piano concerto number 20 in the first half of the program. And that's a piece that, as a youth at Bates College, as a sophomore, I performed that piece. So, in this particular instance, although I was cranky that it was a longer concert than it needed to be, I was delighted to, to hear that, to hear that piece. Um, I would pay extra, I've said this before, I'm going to say it every time, I would pay extra to go to a concert that was just the main attraction. I charge me 10% extra and make the Sunday afternoon performances only Brahms Requiem, only the Rite of Spring. Now, again, in this case, I was okay hearing the piece, one of my favorite pieces of all time, that D minor concerto, but... You could argue, I suppose, that on any given concert, there's a piece that someone in the audience somewhere has that same response to, and that the pleasure I took from having that totally unnecessary but quite wonderful piece added to the program, they might feel if Beethoven's Wellington Overture, or God, whatever, was programmed, I wouldn't want to deprive them of that joy. But then, you know, they go Friday or Saturday, and then Sunday is just the main event. And I also know that defining what the main event is um, is usually apparent, but not always. Like, sometimes I will go for a piece that isn't the headline. But that's rare. And if that's the case, I'll go on the Friday. I don't know. There's got to be a way around it. You know... I took the bus in, so I left the house at 1.30, concerts at 2.30. It finished, I don't know, quarter to five. I didn't stick around. For the, the house went wild for the Brahms. I mean, it was really great. It's a great piece. It was well done. It was before Hanuk conducted nicely. The solos were nice. The chorus was great. But I, I cut right out. I had to get home for my dogs, right? I'd been away in the morning. I'd gone to church. I was away in the afternoon. They don't like to be on their own that long, so I need. I wanted to get home. What I learned was that right by Heinz Hall in Pittsburgh is a bus route called the 77. It leaves from Market Square and then goes down Bigelow Boulevard to Baum and then turns up Negley and Bob's your uncle, you're home. It's great. Uh, there, are, there are two things going against it. One is I'm never out the Market Square, Liberty side of town. The times I'm in time now, town now, I'm up 
around Grand Street, where my work office is. Uh, and then when I am in town for the symphony, that bus runs every 65 minutes, which is useless, but it just happened that I, I caught it. So that was great. Um, but still, so then it was 5.20 by the time I got home. So that's f four hours. You know, it could have been two hours less overall if it had just been the Brahms. Could have been done at 3.30. No, no, quarter, you know, quarter four. So I don't know what you all think, and I'm totally open to having people criticize my programming decisions. Clearly, there's a reason why every orchestra schedules stuff like this. But let me know if you uh, if you agree with me. Let me know if you disagree with me as well. So, Mozart, concerto, nicely played. Can't remember the guy's name. I've got it here somewhere. Let's see. Uh Bezod Abdurumov. He played very cleanly with a bit of aggression, nicely placed. You know, like, it doesn't have to be um, delicate all the time. That piano in Heinz Hall is uh, still brand new Steinway. It's beautiful. Uh, so we had some nice colors coming out of the, coming out of the piano. It wasn't you didn't blow me away, but uh, you know when, when. What do I expect? Um, not every performance Glenn Gould or Horowitz. People are just going to play the music nicely the way it's supposed to be played, and I should just get used to that. Now, here's the thing, right? So the other, the first piece was by and I need to look up Eric Eschenwald, it's a Latvian. That's all I know. About him, he wrote a piece called Lux Eterni, sung by the Mendelssohn Choir, who are the chorus that we're in for the Brahms. And they, uh, so the lights were out, and the chorus processed in along the sides of the orchestra, first floor. And then when they were all there, they were all holding little votives. I, I imagine they were little electric battery but votives, not open flame. And, and they sang their piece, um, five minutes or so, uh, a cappella, and beautiful. It was nice. Um, but the, but here's the thing: and Honig does stuff like this. He did it. He did things like this during the Mozart Requiem. While the lights were down, the soloist for the Mozart had snuck out on stage, and so with no break from the a cappella, the orchestra started in with the opening. I don't like it. I don't know why I don't like it. I think I should like things like that, but I didn't. But then it's it, it kind of worked as well, right? The piece, the vocal piece sort of evaporated, and then the opening of that concerto is this, is this pulse. It kind of comes out of nowhere. So I could see the thinking. It was nice. I guess it was all right. But I don't, you know, don't do that kind of stuff. I don't know. Or do it, but you don't need to do it. Don't do it because you think it's going to make the or the audience more engaged. The hall's only half full. I mean, no one's going. Uh, so just play the Brahms. That Brahms now... Um, I prefer the chamber music Brahms to the symphony stuff. And uh, even within that, I prefer the solo instrument sonatas, particularly the violin sonatas. I played one of them, also at Bates, in my junior year, well, my senior year. I played the piano. I didn't play the, didn't play the violin on it. And that's uh, gorgeous. But you know what? So is the Requiem. I, I've i changed my opinion in the last five years. So the 
I've just never gotten into the Brahms symphonies. And, you know, most of my closest friends adore them. And they always felt a bit stodgy to me, which I know is of my f- flaw, failing, and weakness, or bad judgment. And I kind of wrapped the Requiem up in with, the, with that, but God, it was beautiful. I was trying to think. It, it's a, it has this sort of warm golden feel to it. Different, like Poulenc, the Poulenc Gloria has a rose gold feel to it. This was like a dark, the Brahms Requiem is like a dark, like a lustrous gold. I don't know how to describe it. Not brown, not brown gold, gold, like a gold bar. Kind of in the, maybe a gold bar in, uh, in moonlight, but cloudy moonlight. See, there's a bit of luster. The Poulon, the Poulon Gloria is rose gold, like the dawn, fragmented through crystals and um, that's not what the Brahms is. But it was gorgeous. Um, in in the way that I've always been attached to the violin sonatas, I felt that way today listening to the to the Brahms Requiem. Um, I'd like to write a piece like that, a piece with liturgical intent, but with um, text that I select. I thought for a long time I would use se- sections from. Emerson's essays. But what happens when I start to read Emerson's essays is I, I get a little bored. No good, is it? I get a bit bored and I put them aside and I read Leaves of Grass instead and could totally write a mass for the cosmic living and dead with, you could write a hundred of them with text from Leaves of Grass. Um, I think what I would do before I did that, but well, before I did that, I would finish my opera, <laughs> which I've made some progress on the libretto. I've structurally, I've marked it, I've changed the changed the content of the libretto a little bit. I've gone away from the idea of three acts, which I ended up hampering. It was useful at first, uh, but it's not in three acts. I think it's in nine scenes. Maybe that's a distinction without a difference. Uh, but it's helping me think more clearly about the scope of the work remaining to write it. Uh, but I could totally see myself writing a big, long madrigal setting, like maybe for eight, ten voices, of um, not leaves of grass, but uh, when lilacs last in, in dooryard bloomed. That is what was floating around in my mind within the Brahms Requiem. Oh, the soloists were, were great. Um, the soprano was really delicate. She was nice. And it was a nice performance. The chorus was great. The Mendelssohn chorus was really, really great. So, that's probably enough. If you were at the concert and thought that it was perfectly timed, or, you know, duration, let me know. Uh, if you also think that we should have the opportunity to enjoy the focus of the piece rather than the drudgery of a three-hour thing, let me know that too. Um, I don't think I have any more left in December. Busy January. I think there was two Pittsburgh concerts, and then my my wife and I going to Erie. I've just been hearing great things about the Erie Philharmonic, and, I, and the conductor. I've heard 
don't know the conductor and I don't know anyone who knows the conductor, but I've just, I've just got a vibe that things are happening up in Erie. Um, and so we're going to go up and check them out because on a weekend in January, they are performing Mahler's third symphony, which, uh, is, a, I know it sounds like every piece I talk about is one of my favorite pieces, but the Mahler third really is one of my favorite pieces. And I'm just really looking forward to hearing it. We're going to drive up, spend the night in Erie. We're going to have our dogs with us. We're going to have an Airbnb a little bit outside of town. We're going to make a whole weekend of it. For those of you who do not live in the Pittsburgh area, Erie is about two hours north, and it is on Lake Erie, as you would expect. Uh, well, maybe you wouldn't expect. There could be an Erie that's in the middle of the state. There probably is. This is Erie on Lake Erie, um, very near to the New York border, New York State border. So we'll drive up, we'll grab some dinner, not sure where yet, if you know of any restaurants in Erie, let me know, we're going up in the 20th of January, um, and as I mentioned, it's now the beginning of December, so there's plenty of time for you to Leave your recommendations in the comments. Um, my recollection from driving through Erie is that the highway, 79 that goes up and then hits 80 maybe, that intersection uh, is filled with places like TJ Fridays, and, which I like, perfectly happy with that. So maybe that's where we'll eat. Then... Uh, so we'll have our dogs with us, and um, they'll like that. And then Sunday, maybe we'll go to the beach for a bit. The beach, Presque Isle, it'd be nice in January. And uh, then drive home. Should be good. Um, anyway, thank you. And um, let me know what you all think.